My Frontiers review is coming along really well, but it needs more time. So until then, let's go on another musical adventure. Last time I talked about Sonic Forces music that didn't get to shine because of how the game was structured, but today I present an entire soundtrack that was undermined by its very platform. Sonic Runners was a mobile game released in 2015 and discontinued one year later. Accompanying it was one of the most upbeat, feel-good OSTs in the franchise. Now, of course, not everybody missed out on it, it was relatively popular, but being a mobile game naturally had an impact on its reach, and if you weren't actively playing during its relevancy, there's a good chance you never bothered to check out the music. It's not a long one, only 13 songs, but this was Otani's main project right in between Lost World and Forces, and it shows. You can definitely hear the Lost World influence when the violin and piano are used, and the types of emotional melodies he would later incorporate into a lot of Forces tracks. Overall, though, this is a a rock-oriented sound much more than either of those two. Very 2000s summer break with an uplifting tone. Nothing heavy or melancholic, just a strong focus on rhythm and melody like the start of a wholesome new chapter. Beyond the Speed Of is, for all intents and purposes, the main theme playing at the title and in regular stages, and it is so impeccably sonic. It's catchy, it's happy, it makes you feel good to be alive. Just get up and go. For real, if you're having a bad day, Listen to Runners and you'll feel like the main character about to pave his own destiny. From the pulse-pounding drum intro to the infectious chorus, this song is nothing but smiles. Some of the songs have bridge portions or breakdowns where a track or two will be taken out to quiet the music, and it can change the mood to build some suspense as it reels you back in for one final lap. Fly Away could be seen as a Tales song. It plays in the flight character stages, adopting a whimsical, piano-focused first half that makes you want to look up at the sky and dream of what if. That is, until the guitar swoops back in like, hey, you can't stand there forever, though. Let's get moving. But not in a startling or authoritative way. Rather, it's a compassionate reminder to not stay trapped in your head and go live your life by taking action. And there's no better time than right now.
Power Ride is for the power characters, so fittingly the music goes a bit harder with a fast, funky riff that gets more intense. Especially with headphones on, you get to hear all the stereo nuance Otani loves to use. It's kind of the inverse of Fly Away. The guitar is prevalent in the beginning and then breaks away with the piano to cool off. Out of the whole bunch, this one is the most fun sounding. It has a playfully positive energy that starts serious, but loosens up by the end. <laughs> The bridge on this one is really nice, a quick double-tracked lead harmony that combines the funk of the main guitar with the gleeful piano, resulting in a heavenly detour. Theory of Attack is the grooviest and most headbanging it gets, setting the stage for an excellent boss theme. It comes in hot, only peeling back after it's made an impression into a subdued version of the main riff, leaving room for some possible vocals to lay on top. Once it's recharged, a static lead comes in like a chorus, but is cut short for the returning riff. This is a fake out though, as an even faster, more elaborate descending lick takes its place, ending the loop on an explosive note. Where To Today plays in the menus, incorporating a laid-back four-chord progression that sounds like it was ripped out of Ned's Declassified. It's a shorter song than the others, but it gets the point across that there's no urgency here. We're all just hanging out, having a good time, and figuring out where to go next.
Going My Way is the Invincibility theme, remixing Beyond the Speed Of's chorus at a higher BPM with electronic drums. It also has an ending that I never got to hear in-game, where it ducks out and stutters like a DJ. Go Quickly is one of my favorites. Such a joyous run down the fretboard, the transition from happy-go-lucky to wistfully nostalgic is masterful, and the drums in double time keep the energy constant. It really owns up to its title, pushing you to go as fast as you can. I was over the moon when I found out there was also a guitar solo on here, and not some slow note picking either, no, he shreds for a good 20 seconds and it may be one of his best. Spring Emotions is the most Lost World sounding song on here, thanks to a heavy focus on violin and piano. It wouldn't be out of place in Windy Hill. This is where the formula of energetic intro, modest verse, and build up to a heartfelt chorus really shines, and is what makes it sound like an anime opening. Like the title suggests, Spring Emotions are what you'll be feeling. It's fresh, it's bright, a hint of melancholy, but overshadowed by the beauty of it all.
Then, like an absolute beast, he spagonias up the place with an accordion solo, taking everyone's money, landing on an isolated violin that turns it into My Destiny, Rooftop Run Edition. Fiery Passion is probably the most musically and tonally diverse track on here. It's like if you took the funk of Power Ride, which applies to the bass line now, it is rich. Added in that crunchy stereo chugging, which turns into wah the second time around. A warbling organ that borders on mysterious. And throw in those tried and true guitar leads. A lot of feelings get explored here. There is a brief melodic solo that tries to make you sad for a second, but then it's like, nah, just kidding, life's good. End of the Summer appears to be the fan favorite, having the most views on YouTube, and it's not hard to see why. We're back to spring emotions with its tear-jerking piano and violin, but now the bittersweet nostalgia is in full force. Whereas every other song sounded like the opening, this signifies the end. An optimistic goodbye reflecting on all the times that were had. Of course, it's sad to see it go, but that doesn't mean something just as grand won't happen again. My favorite part is the clean guitar piece. I imagine a slideshow of good memories playing in my head hearing that.
And just like Beyond the Speed of, we get a bridge cutting down the noise to bring everyone in close before erupting back into it. Strange Parade is the outlier in that it's the only song to be almost completely electronic save for one brief guitar lick, and it sounds straight out of colors, with hints of that Force's progression you can tell he was experimenting with. It also has that same ending credits vibe as End of the Summer, but nowhere near as bittersweet. This is a big old party, a celebration for making it to the end. But of course, my favorite bit is when it all goes quiet to build that tension back up. Magical Snow Day is basically spring emotions, but for winter. So take that anime opening you had pictured in your head for that song, and add snow. Being holiday related, it has that cold yet heartwarming texture, sprinkled with end of the summer nostalgia. Like I said in the beginning, it just feels good to hear. Instead of a typical breakdown though, we get a full minute of new composition. Otani's second halves are always so great, the man knows how to bring it back. And this one in particular has a blustering return.
Ambition is the final track that plays at the results screen. As such, it feels complacent with itself. No need to rush or make a selection, just process everything that happened and continue when you're ready. It's chill and reflective, but never drops its cool either. In a way, it's the best ending the album could have had. Not with a loud bang, but a modest contentment with what it accomplished. Falling back on where it started, with an assisting piano in the background, and the guitar front and center. That is the Sonic Runner's original soundtrack, the most feel-good OST, and perhaps one you hadn't heard before. It's kind of sad reaching the end of it, not because the album's over, but the Runner's sound never makes a return after this. Some of Otani's best work is on here, and it's relegated to a mobile game that you can't even download anymore. I'm aware of the other avenues in which you can experience some of these tracks in gameplay, but it was never gonna reach the level of a major release. And on one hand, that just goes to show how dedicated Sonic's musicians are. And that's awesome. But it might also mean that this gem never gets a second chance to shine. And I think it has too much potential to be left alone like that. Whatever the outcome though, I'm at least glad we have a soundtrack at all we can listen to at the same quality we've come to expect. And I hope those first time listeners enjoyed what they heard. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.